From the early days of lamplighters illuminating city streets to the development of intricate subway lines, the evolution of urban transportation has been marked by numerous groundbreaking milestones. The birth of the Good Roads movement revolutionized infrastructure maintenance, setting new standards for road construction. Ingenious snow removal methods ensured uninterrupted urban mobility during harsh winters by keeping streets clear. The advent of traffic lights significantly improved road safety, providing essential guidance for both drivers and pedestrians. The construction of modern highways exemplified incredible strides in connecting remote regions and fostering national unity. Join us as we explore the historical innovations that have shaped urban transportation. The introduction of gas lighting in the late 18th century revolutionized urban illumination. Gas lamps provided a more reliable and efficient means of lighting streets compared to their predecessors. Lamplighters emerged as a crucial workforce to manage this new form of lighting. Armed with long poles equipped with wicks or gas torches, they traversed the streets at dusk, methodically lighting each lamp to dispel the encroaching darkness. As dawn approached, they repeated the process in reverse extinguishing the lamps to conserve gas and ensure safety during daylight hours. The role of lamplighters extended beyond mere illumination. They served as custodians of public safety and symbols of civic order. Their nightly ritual not only illuminated the physical streets, but also instilled a sense of security and cohesion within the community. With the advent of electric lighting in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, the era of gas-powered street lamps and lamplighters gradually waned. Edward Payson Weston, born in 1839, was a renowned American pedestrian. He became a legend in the world of long-distance walking, setting numerous records and captivating the public with his endurance and determination. Weston's walking career began in the mid-19th century when he walked from Boston to Washington, D.C. in 10 days, earning him widespread recognition. His walking prowess earned him the nickname Father of Pedestrianism. One of Weston's most famous achievements was his walk across America in 1909 at the age of 70. He covered a staggering 3,898 miles from New York City to San Francisco in just 105 days, a feat that captured the imagination of the nation and solidified his status as a walking icon. His walks drew large crowds and garnered significant media attention, making him a household name across the U.S. Edwin Drake drilled the world's first successful oil well in Titusville, Pennsylvania in 1859. Until then, oil was known to seep from the ground in certain regions, but its potential as a valuable resource remained largely untapped. Drake's well, at just 69 feet deep, struck oil and ushered in the modern petroleum industry. This discovery was pivotal, not only for its immediate economic impact, but also for sparking interest in exploring for oil in other regions. Across the Atlantic, the first oil discovery in the Middle East occurred in Iran in 1908 when British geologist George B. Reynolds identified a vast oil field in Masjed Soliman. In 1938, American geologists struck oil in Damam No. 7 well, establishing the Arabian American Oil Company, which would later become the cornerstone of Saudi Arabia's petroleum industry. These initial findings marked the beginning of a relentless pursuit of oil resources around the world. Carl Benz's creation of the motor wagon, patented and unveiled in 1886, marked a groundbreaking moment in the history of transportation. Widely acknowledged as the world's first automobile, it featured a revolutionary design that combined an internal combustion engine with a vehicle chassis. As a three-wheeled vehicle, it represented a departure from traditional horse-drawn carriages 
paving the way for a transformative shift in personal and industrial mobility. The motor wagon was powered by a single-cylinder four-stroke engine fueled by gasoline, a pioneering concept that set the standard for future automotive development. The engine generated about a 75 horsepower and was coupled with a mechanical transmission, providing a top speed of around 10 miles per hour. Benz's innovative approach to vehicle design included features such as a tubular steel frame, rack and pinion steering, and a differential gear mechanism. In 1885, Gottlieb Daimler and Wilhelm Maybach developed the Daimler Reitwagen, considered by many as the world's first motorcycle. This crude but innovative machine featured a small, single-cylinder engine mounted on a wooden frame, driving the rear wheel via a belt. In 1894, Hildebrand and Wolfmuller introduced the first series production motorcycle, featuring a two-cylinder, four-stroke engine. This marked a significant milestone as it made motorbikes accessible to the public on a larger scale. Another notable early chopper was the Werner Brothers motorcycle, introduced in 1898. It featured a lightweight frame and a powerful engine, setting new standards for performance and design. In 1901, the Indian Motorcycle Company became one of the earliest American motorcycle manufacturers. Their Indian single gained popularity for its reliability and performance, leading law enforcement agencies to begin acquiring them for these attributes. The Good Roads movement emerged in the late 19th century and gained momentum in the following decades, primarily in the United States. It was a grassroots campaign advocating for the improvement of road infrastructure across the nation. During this time, rural areas faced challenges with poorly maintained and often impassable roads, hindering economic development and isolating communities. Proponents argued that improved roads would facilitate the transportation of goods, connect rural and urban areas, and enhance the overall efficiency of the transportation system. The movement gained support from farmers, businesses, and automobile enthusiasts who saw the potential for better roads to benefit agriculture, commerce, and the burgeoning automobile industry. In 1916, the Federal Aid Road Act was passed, marking a significant milestone for the Good Roads Movement. This legislation provided federal funds to assist states in building and maintaining highways. These early electric cars were already being constructed more than a hundred years ago. The Flocken Electrowagen is considered one of the earliest purpose-built electric vehicles. Although more of a prototype, it showcased the potential of electric propulsion. The Baker electric vehicles were known for their reliability and ease of use, attracting a clientele that included affluent individuals, including notable figures like Henry Ford's wife, Clara. The Detroit Electric Car Company was a prominent manufacturer of electric cars during the early 20th century. Their vehicles were popular among the upper class, offering a smooth and silent driving experience. Columbia Electric gained recognition for its electric cars in the early 1900s. Known for their stylish designs and relatively long range for the time, its vehicles found favor among urban elites. The Fritchell electric cars were notable for their advanced technology, featuring a regenerative braking system. They were relatively popular in the early 1900s before the company faced financial challenges. By the end of the 1800s, Paris faced significant challenges with congestion, traffic, 
and public health due to overcrowding and inadequate transportation infrastructure. Under the leadership of Chief Engineer Fulgence Bienvenu, plans for a metropolitane began to materialize in 1896. One major difficulty was the need to excavate beneath the densely populated and historically significant streets of Paris without disrupting daily life or damaging existing structures. Engineers had to navigate through layers of underground infrastructure, including sewers, water pipes, and existing tunnels, while minimizing disruptions to the city above. Financial constraints also posed challenges, requiring creative solutions to secure funding for the ambitious project. Despite these obstacles, construction of the Paris Metro began in 1898, and the first line opened to the public in 1900, just in time for the Exposition Universelle. Snow removal has come a long way from the early days when communities had to rely on manual labor and basic tools to clear accumulated snow. In the 19th century, the introduction of horse-drawn snowplows marked a significant improvement in efficiency. These early plows featured large blades designed to push snow to the sides as the horse-drawn contraption moved forward. While an advancement over manual labor, the process was still labor-intensive and slow. The transition to the 20th century brought further innovation with the advent of tractor-driven snowplows. Powered by internal combustion engines, these plows offered increased power and efficiency compared to their horse-drawn predecessors. However, it was in 1925 that Arthur Secar, a Canadian inventor, revolutionized snow removal with the introduction of the first snowblower. Sicard's invention replaced traditional plowing methods with an auger mechanism that scooped up and expelled snow, providing a more efficient and mechanized solution. When streets were bustling with pedestrians and horse-drawn carriages, Chaos was kept at bay by the diligent work of traffic officers. In 1868, the world finally witnessed the birth of the first traffic lights outside the Houses of Parliament in London, which were operated manually by a vigilant police officer. The real game changer came in 1914 when the first electric traffic light system made its debut in Cleveland, Ohio, introducing the iconic red and green lights. In 1920, William Potts, a Detroit police officer, played a pivotal role in refining the traffic light system. He introduced the three-color scheme we recognize today, adding the yellow light to warn drivers of upcoming changes. But traffic lights also faced challenges during their evolution. In World War II, material shortages led to the use of four-way stop signs. Regarding jaywalking, the Chanute Daily Tribune warned in 1909 that the jaywalker needs attention as well as the jay driver and is about as big a nuisance. The road connecting Alaska and mainland USA is the Alaska Highway. Its construction was initiated during World War II in 1942, driven by strategic military considerations. It was also a massive undertaking that involved the collaboration of the United States Army, the Army Corps of Engineers, and numerous civilian contractors. The project aimed to connect the existing road network in Dawson Creek, British Columbia, to Delta Junction in Alaska, covering approximately 1,390 miles of challenging terrain. Thousands of soldiers and civilian workers faced extreme temperatures, dense forests, and unpredictable terrain requiring them to overcome various obstacles, including rivers and mountains. The highway was completed in just eight months, a remarkable feat given the adverse conditions, at a final cost of $138 million, equivalent to $2.5 billion in 2024. Its completion significantly contributed to the economic development of the region, fostering increased connectivity between Alaska and the rest of the continent.
The Trans-Canada Highway, one of the world's longest national road systems, spans the breadth of Canada, connecting the Atlantic and Pacific coasts. The idea for such a highway emerged in the early 20th century, driven by the need for better transportation and communication across the vast Canadian landscape. The project gained momentum in the 1940s, fueled by the strategic importance of connecting the country during World War II. Construction officially began in 1950, and the highway was gradually built over several decades. The route, spanning over 7,800 kilometers, passes through 10 provinces and includes ferry connections to reach the island province of Newfoundland and Labrador. The highway's construction was a monumental engineering feat, navigating diverse terrains, from mountains and forests to prairies and rivers. The completion of the Trans-Canada Highway in 1971 marked a significant milestone in Canadian history, fostering economic development, tourism, and national unity.